Dan Tortora here with Cooper Lutz and Cooper, uh, happy to be here with you and, and happy to come off of last season and obviously see you get some action out there. Just what you can say about the fact that going into the year, you know, maybe fourth or fifth on the depth chart and you just worked your way up. Yeah, so I'm um, extremely grateful for the opportunity that I was given last season. Um, obviously, it was a kind of like out of the blue. <laughs> I mean, I switched the position and then uh, just getting there and working my way up the depth chart. And uh, just now, just trying to go out every day and just uh, better myself. So it's, it's a pretty cool experience. Can you speak to, I mean, when you found out that Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard weren't coming back, just how that maybe shifted things? Did it feel like it was like an immediate, oh, okay, I need to go help over here? Or yeah, how so um, I actually got moved in the spring. So before COVID and everything and all that, we had like three practices. So coming into fall camp, I knew I was, uh, I knew I was there uh, in the running back room already. But you go in there with like a whole different expectation. There's two more running backs in front of you. You're going to see very, very like little pre little reps in practice, um, and then you get shift to being like in in a position where you're running behind like the two offensive line, and then just making plays from there. For you, when you came in to potentially play a different role, because I remember going through recruitment, seeing that you could be on either side, offense mm -hmm. or defense. Did you have a preference when you came in? Uh, yeah, I think I always wanted to play running back, but I came here with the intention of playing slot receiver. Um, I, I was had the intention of it, of my running back skills transitioning to receiver, and it didn't work out that way. So I'm thankful that I'm back at running back. Was there ever a chance that you could have gone defensively at all? Or? Um, I, I got recruited here to play offense, so yeah. they, they, I don't think they were looking at me to uh, to play defense. But So you get the opportunity at, at running back, and when – you find out and Sean Tucker finds out, hey, there's, you know, Jarvion and Abdul aren't going to play this season. And you guys had that opportunity to step up and, and find your place. Did you work with him a lot? Did you kind of just talk to each other and say, hey, listen, there's there's not a lot of guys behind those guys, so we're going to have to make something work? Yeah, so Tuck was new last year. I barely we barely, I barely knew him before he got here because we had COVID. We, had, we, were, we were all in uh, different pods or whatever until, until the fall camp started. So... Immediately, we had to become close, and we had to start helping each other out because we were learning, both like trying to still learn the running back position. So, you getting into the running back position and getting into that room, how long did it take you to get comfortable? Um, I'd say once I got out there the first week or so, it's just like you start seeing things that were familiar before, and it's kind of like riding a bike. Now, Marlo Wax, as a linebacker, he was recruited where he could have played running back mm -hmm. as well. What are your thoughts on, on him and the fact that, like you said, you came in and could have played a different position? There are guys that kind of shift and find their place. Uh, what does Marlo bring to the team, and do you like the fact that he could be a guy hitting you in practice? Yeah, Marlo's <laughs> a, a funny guy. He's also an excellent player. Uh, he actually just got a single digit, so that's big time for him. Um, now I'm happy he's uh, on defense because it'll, it'll just better me every single day. Um, just a great player and a great person. Can you go into that a little bit for the people that don't know how important a single digit is? Yeah, so uh, single digits at Syracuse, Coach Babers has to approve them, and it's like they're only they're earned. They aren't just you can't nobody can just have them like that. So which one did he get? Uh, two. Two. Yeah. So we'll see Marlow X in, in two this year. Yeah. Now for you, Cooper, seeing the room come back, seeing Abdul and, and Jarvion, and obviously Sean and yourself, and then Josh Huff come in from Beaverton, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. What does this running back room look like to you from your perspective? Yeah, so obviously we have a lot of guys with game experience. I mean, we can all go, and I think it's definitely going to be a strength of our offense. It's going to have to be if we're going to want to win, win the amount of games that we want to win. So uh, just everybody has to come out, and anytime you're in the game, you got to make the most of it. I believe on the road last year at South Bend, you had that big-time play mm -hmm. in Notre Dame. You're going to have that forever. Uh, can you bring me into that moment? Yeah, so it's just a great experience all around. Uh, we had very, like, little amount of games that we had actual fans at and uh, I was fortunate enough to have my parents there and my family so it was, that that just made it all that much better but doing uh, something so great there was awesome. Bring me into the play. Um, yeah so it was just ISO to the left and I just <laughs> <laughs> we ran that play maybe three times in a row I just popped it right out right to the right the linebackers just overflowed it we had I think their corner fell down and just took it to the crib. When you look at a moment like that, obviously the season didn't end the way that you wanted to last year, but 
to be one of the players to go into South Bend and to score on Notre Dame, I mean, that's that's got to be something that's going to sit in your wheelhouse forever, I would imagine. Yeah, no, it's it was it was awesome to have my uh, first college touchdown be there, and obviously any touchdown, but um, something that I'll hold and cherish forever. So you had your first college touchdown there. What are your thoughts about getting to score inside of this dome in front of fans? Yeah, that, I mean, that, that'll that probably be just as memorable as uh, that. Um, but I'm excited to get back in there and uh, see everybody going crazy. What can you say about Garrett Schrader and Tommy DeVito? Uh, Dino said uh, three weeks ago that we were in a place where he wanted one of them to claim the job. Mm -hmm. And then last week he said, we're going to see both of them out there. As a running back in this offense, what can you say about the strengths of both of the guys? Yeah, so obviously they're both great players. Um, they like Tommy's been in the system for a while. Garrett's still like picking it up, but um, I'm just happy to be out there with either one of them. And anytime they're out there, they're both on go. So, is there something unique about each of their abilities? Yeah, I mean. Garrett, as you can see from the SEC, he's obviously a big runner and whatnot. Tommy can sling the ball like nobody. So, And knowing that Garrett can, can run the ball, he had almost 600 yards rushing back in 2019 and six touchdowns on the ground. What does that bring to this offense, knowing what you already have? Yeah, so it'll just help the run, run game. I mean, obviously, if he's pulling the ball a lot, they're going to have to worry about him taking, like, running the ball, not just the running back. So. And for your open up the pass game as well too. For your running back room, what is your take on kind of how this thing will balance out? I mean, we look at the depth chart. Sean's there. You're at the two, and it says or Jarvion Howard with five guys arguably that can get out there and do something. How do you see it splitting up? Do you think that um, you all get to either? Yeah. So that, that's what I'm. That's what I'm taking away from it. It's like when you're out there, you're just gonna make the most of your opportunities and evaluations are going to continue to go but um, once you're out there you just got to make the most of your opportunities i think that this should be rbu based on the history <laughs> you're standing with the ernie davis thing behind you here so i think it's a a thing that's eric you should be utilizing i selfishly want to see the ball run 20 to 30 times a game what can you tell me about the expectation of will there be more balance in your opinion uh going as in from like, pass, like pass, to run. And pass and yeah run so I mean, Coach Babers always talks about how he we want to run like 100 plays a game. Obviously, we can't be throwing the ball 100 times a game. So we're going to have to, if we're going to run 100 plays, we're going to have to be able to move the chains and you have to run the football to be able to do that. The offensive line, Aaron Service has been all over. I call him the grandfather of the line. So seeing him at right tackle, Matt Bergeron at left, and then in the interior are going to be some new faces, Chris Bleich coming up and whatnot, and Jacob Bradford coming in to help out Aaron. How do you see the offensive line? Because obviously they're directly connected to your success. Yeah, they're uh, a big load of guys. I mean, <laughs> uh, I love all of them. I mean, they, they, they flip around They'll just so, like, no matter what happens, everybody knows kind of all of the positions up there. So we saw a lot of that going in fall camp and just guys moving around and whatnot. But I think we right now we're set on what we got. And do you feel like there's there's like a starting five on that offensive line that – can start to become maybe more consistent? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's a better question for like Coach Babers, but what, from what I've seen, uh, I think it's pretty consistently going out there every day. They're, they're looking pretty consistent. We don't get to see practice, so what can you say about fall camp? Um, I mean, it was extremely competitive from a running back perspective. We have five guys on go, and just when you're out there, you got to make the most of your reps. Um, but yeah, it was extremely competitive. We were banging every day, so. Who got, I mean, how did you get, who did you, who pushed you the most and where did you get better? Um, I would say just from a mental perspective and just, I, I, I put, I'm pretty hard on myself to just make sure I'm locked in all the time. Um, especially when I'm not, we will go through team periods and maybe I'll get four or five plays and then we're going like 25 plays. So those other 20 plays, I have to make sure I'm on the calls. I know what the O-line's doing. I see the blitzes. I see all, I see the secondary. So just being mentally locked in and just bettering myself. And Cooper, for the fans, you get to see them finally. What do you want to tell them? Um, just come ready to go. I mean, from, from, uh, Next week, what was that, Rutgers? Yeah. We, we're going to need you guys just as, like, last year we didn't have that advantage, but we need a home field advantage this year. Definitely it'll help us 